Hello! Welcome to my laboratory, my friends. Now, most people, they may know me as a mad scientist, but I am here to tell you I'm not crazy at all. But today, I am going to be batty. <laughs> now, what I mean by that is we're going to be talking about our friends, the bats. Hi, my name's Gail. Bats are very cool. They are the only mammal that can fly. Now, if you put your arm out, that is what a bat's wing is. Imagine that your fingers are very, very long. In fact, let's imagine that you have skin that runs from one finger to another, to another, to another. That's a bat's wing. And in fact, if I could take this and bring it the whole way down to my knee or ankle, and on the top here, bring it the whole way up to my shoulder, that's how a bat's wing is. Their thumb is outside of the, the wing. They have, they can just use that to climb around on. There's even a little thumbnail. This is why scientists call them hand wing. Or if you like the scientific name, it's called Chiroptera. So how do bats get around at night? They have this special ability to see in the darkness and to find their prey. It is called echolocation. Let me put this into perspective for you. For instance, the bats, as uh, many people think, are blind. This is not true. The bat has great eyesight, but they cannot see in the dark. Just like you and I, we cannot see in the dark. If these lights were to go out... Oh, oh my. But I don't have echolocation. The bat does. And it uses it to find things in the dark is much like the sonar of a submarine. It sends out those wide waves of sound, and as they hit something, it sends information back, no matter how dark it gets. They can send out these little chirps, these little clicks, and as the sound comes back, it tells them what's there. It could be a tree, it could be the wall, why it could be you and me that they run into. <laughs> but they don't because of that superpower and they're able to navigate around in complete darkness. And they can even pinpoint the tiniest of creatures, like a, a mosquito, or a cricket, or even a moth. And they swoop in there and they crunch it right up. It's delicious for them, kind of like sandwich for you and me, no? There are a lot of bats that have really funny faces. They look weird to us. In fact, some of them, they look like, well, it's hard to tell where their faces are because they have so many weird little wrinkles and lumps and bumps on their face. Now these lumps and bumps look weird to us, but they all help the bats to hear. Those little lumps and bumps will funnel those echoes back towards their, their ears, and it makes them that much more sensitive as they're flying around using their echolocation. There are over a thousand species of bats worldwide. There are bats that live in an awful lot of different places and they have all different lifestyles. Some bats live in caves that are warm and cozy, some bats live in the trees, and some bats make their homes high in the mountaintops. But every so often, a bat might find its way into your home. This is because it is warm and cozy and the bat likes to feel safe. But do not be afraid, it is okay. You can get them back outside easy ways. Simply close the door, open the window and make sure there is no screen on it. The bat will fly back outside and no one will have to worry about anything. But if you are too afraid to do even that, that is okay. Simply call animal control or let an adult know and they'll be able to help you out. The largest bats are called flying foxes. They live in Southeast Asia and some of them have a wingspan that's up to five to six feet long. That's a very big bat. How much do they weigh? About the same as these two containers of salsa, about two pounds. At the other end of the size scale is the kitty's hognose bat, also known as the bumblebee bat. They live in Thailand. They weigh as much as this dime. They're one of the smallest ones in the world. One of my very favorite bats is the big brown bat. Big brown bats are not very big. Their body is only about this big, and they only weigh the same as these 21 paper clips. So what's the deal with vampire bats? All right, my friends, let's get serious. I need to talk to you, to you, 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 you about something that is very misunderstood. And that would be, my friend, the vampire bat. 
Now many people hear this infamous name and they start to think like the movies of the bat coming with its fangs to eat you. But this is not true. The vampire bat is actually quite afraid of you. It's quite afraid of me. It's afraid of many things because it is so tiny and it only lives in one place down there in Central America. Now these bats, they prefer to drink the blood of, of pigs, goats, chickens, cows. Basically, they feed on the same animals that me and you eat regularly. These creatures, they never harm them. They very rarely would ever even hurt them. They just need about two teaspoons of their blood to survive. It's all they ask. They are kind of like great big mosquito, only with far less diseases. You see, the bats, I like to think of them as kind of like a sky puppy. They are adorable and cute. They are not something to be afraid of. One of the prettiest bats in North America is called the red bat. Now, they're not very big. They're very small bats as well. And they're covered with a beautiful orangey red colored fur. And they tend to be out fairly early in the evening. So people see them. They're flying around fairly low looking for moths. And people think that they're actually a bird. Now. The red bats live a little differently than some of the other bats do. They don't live in caves. They don't live in houses. They live in trees. They live all by themselves. And their tail membrane is actually covered with fur. It's their own little blanket. So when they hang up by a little foot hanging off of a branch, they cover themselves with their tail. And that keeps them nice and toasty warm. Most bats only have one or two babies in the spring. Red bats can have up to four baby bats at the same time. Baby bats are called pups. We're standing here in a cave. You might be asking, what kind of bats would you find in a cave? One of those bats is called the Mexican free-tailed bat. And when free-tailed bats live in a cave, they like to live together. They're very social. You can have up to 20 million bats in one colony. That's huge. Now, baby bats are in there. How do the mothers find their particular baby bat? How can they find their baby? They use their sense of smell as well as their sense of hearing. And the mothers go straight to their very own baby. You might wonder if you're going to see a bat on one of your tours. And the answer is probably not. Now imagine that you are trying to sleep and groups of people keep coming through your bedroom talking loudly every 10 minutes. Bats aren't really fond of that either, so we don't see bats very often. Do you like bananas, peaches, dates, figs, cashews? Do you like chewing gum? Do you like chocolate? How about guacamole? We would have none of these things if it weren't for bats. There are bats living in the tropics that fly around from flower to flower, just like a bee does up here. Instead of bees, it's the bats that do the pollinating. And because of bats, we have these wonderful things. Now, if you do see a bat out in the wild, marvel that they're out there doing really cool things for us. Bats are wonderful. Thanks for watching. Now get out there and go batty!